Mac apps. There are many of them, hundreds. But which ones are severely overhyped garbage and which ones are actually useful? I made quite a few Mac app videos, icebergs, and some of you asked me, do I use all of these apps? Absolutely not. This video, I will use the tier system to rank Mac apps in terms of how useful they are to me. Let's run through what these letters mean. S tier, life-changing apps. I would find it really annoying to use my Mac without them. A tier, really nice to have, but not the end of the world if I don't have them. I would prefer to have them installed though. B tier, it's okay in some scenarios. C tier, I prefer not to have these installed. They can be useful in small amount of use cases, maybe for other people, but most of the time I'm better off without them. D -tier, here. Useless bloat. Also, this is what I think, and you may find that an app I put in D tier is an absolute S tier app for you. Let's start with apps that you probably spend most of your time in. The browsers. I can't really put any of them in S tier because I keep switching my browser every two or three months. Because either I want to try one for a video, I get bored of it, or some missing features or bugs start to annoy me so much that I switch. But Safari is one of those that I always come back to, so it's an A tier. Microsoft Edge, I've heard it's a great browser for Mac, interestingly, but I only use it to view PDFs. Please, no. Oh, and I have to close the one that lights up green. Of course. So I'm demoting it to C tier. I can see how it may be great for other people, but not for me. Firefox. I don't use it as much as Safari, so it naturally just fits over here. Chrome? Oh, just kidding, just kidding. I'm going to put Chrome in A tier. Some people will definitely not like this. However, Chrome just works with everything. Every extension that I need is on Chrome. If other browsers bug out on some website, Chrome usually doesn't. So that's why it's good. Of course, there are plenty reasons it's bad. <clears throat> Google. And which browser am I making this tier list video in? Unfortunately, this information is not accessible and is held as a state secret. Stop. I hope you're enjoying your day, but I have to interrupt to tell you about a quick sponsor. It's a Mac app that I've been using myself for over a year before they reached out to sponsor a video. It's called All Dente and it lets you limit how much your MacBook's battery can charge up to. In case you didn't know, it's best to keep your battery in between 30 and 80% of charge to keep it healthy for a long time and postpone having to replace it. Apple even slows down battery charging when it's above 80% to minimize the damage. So with All Dente, you can limit the maximum amount of charge. Once it gets up to that amount, your Mac will start drawing power straight from the cable, bypassing the battery. On top of that, there are features like heat protection, which pause charging immediately when the temperature gets too high to save battery health. You can even see how much power comes in from the cable and the battery. If you decide that you need the full tank, just click top up and it will charge up to 100%. Each feature is also nicely documented, so you don't have to guess what it does. If you keep your MacBook plugged in most of the time like me, this app is super clutch to prolong the lifespan of your battery. There's a limited time disk to the pro version of the app if you click the link in the description. Back to the tier list. Then we have Arc. I'm going to put it in the same tier as Firefox because I used it once for a long time and then I switched to the next browser which is Orion. It's also B tier because it's very buggy. Although I love the concept of Safari running Chrome extensions, at the moment there are just too many bugs with the Orion browser that I encountered. And the final browser is called, wait what is it called? Min. And I didn't really give it a fair try because I used it for like 10 minutes and then decided to go back to a more conventional browser after finding out that most features I'm used to are missing. Moving on to Alfred, which is a spotlight replacement. I would put it in S tier, but I can live without it. So I'm putting it in A tier. It's a very good app. Being able to search within any website is a great feature that Spotlight should have, and it's very customizable. Great app, almost S tier. Also for most of these apps, just like Alfred, I use a free version if it's available. Next, we have Bartender, an app that lets you hide menu bar icons. If you're going to use an external monitor, you basically don't need this app at all, so it could go into D tier, but I find it really nice to have my menu bar tidy, so I'm putting it in A tier. I can live without it, of course, but I prefer to have it. The next app is Ina. It's a media player. It's not bad. Definitely better than the default QuickTime player, or is it better? You see, this doesn't have a screen recording feature, but QuickTime does have a screen recording feature. So I'm putting it in S tier because I make videos and I need screen recordings. And although there are many screen recording software out there, QuickTime is just the most reliable. That's why 
it's an S tier. Now, Ina is pretty good, but then there's also VLC, which is slightly better than Ina. You can do more with it, or I'm just more familiar with it. And it's an OG app, so I have to put it in A tier. Photoshop, definitely an S tier. You wouldn't be watching this video if not for the top notch, high quality thumbnail that I created with it. Spotify, listening to music, B tier. I can live without it. Mackie, this app gives you access to your clipboard history, and it's an absolute S tier feature for me. I hate not having access to clipboard history. Although Windows has this built in, macOS doesn't. So you have to use an app. It's also free. Apple Notes. S tier. The curve explains everything. Now I have to say that I'm still in the middle of the bell curve and I use Obsidian just because a YouTube video convinced me that Markdown is the best file format to use for longevity. So I have half my notes in Obsidian and half my notes in Apple Notes. But I'm still going to put Obsidian in A tier because you can access Apple Notes across every device, every Apple device, and I often take notes on my iPhone. But I can't do that with Obsidian and have the notes sync for free. One password. It's a password manager. I know I should use one, but I don't. And that's why I'm putting it in B tier. I can live without it. But I recommend using a password manager. What do you call that? hypocrite. Next we have CleanShot X. It's an app for screenshots and screen recordings. It's a paid app with a subscription, so naturally it doesn't get S tier status, but it's pretty good. Although most things that you can do with this app, you can already do with QuickTime and Photoshop. So I'm putting it in B tier. I can definitely live without it, but I still use it sometimes. Premiere Pro. I use this app for way too long, and you're watching this video, because of it. Now this is probably a good time to rank other video editing software like Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve. I'm putting it in C tier not because they suck but because I don't use them. Final Cut is really good for Apple devices and it's a one-time fee and DaVinci Resolve is good because it is free. But I accidentally slipped and started using Premiere first which means that now my laziness to learn a new video editing software keeps me using Adobe software. Not to say that it's bad software, it's really good. I have a whole course about it, but I just don't like the pricing. Audacity. This one is free and I'm also putting it in S tier. Although it's not a requirement for my workflow, Audacity is just a great software for anything audio related. I can do most things that Audacity allows me to do in Premiere, but it's still just an S tier app on its own. Next is Homebrew, a large installer that lets you install other apps through the terminal. I don't find it extremely useful, but I've used it quite a few times, so I'm putting it in B tier. It's good, but not a requirement for me. iStat Menus. This one shows analytics inside of the menu bar. I'm going to put it in C tier because I just don't use it. I find that looking at my Mac stats just makes me waste time. If my Mac starts running slow, a good old restart into Alfred works wonderfully. The same with this app. This is Stats, which is basically a free version of iStat menus, but it's still C tier. Text edit. Although it's not as good as Apple Notes, it's still pretty good. Notepad on Windows or text edit on Mac is just overpowered. Simple and it works. Raycast. This one probably probably will generate a few comments as well, but I'm putting it in C tier because it's the Premiere Pro situation. I started using Alfred and many different apps like a clipboard manager or rectangle before I found out that Raycast exists. By the way, it's also a spotlight replacement that can do more stuff like snap windows and give you your clipboard history. But for some reason, I prefer to do it with different apps. Nothing against using Raycast, of course. I just use a combination of other apps. AdGuard for Safari, of course, S tier. It's an app block. I think everyone should have one. All Dente. I'm going to put it in A tier. Now this app lets you limit how much your battery charges up to. And once your battery reaches that level, it starts using power from the cable bypassing the battery. It's to save on battery health. Numi. This is an absolutely sick calculator app. You can basically type in words what you want to calculate and it'll calculate for you. I'm also putting this in A tier. But there's one tier that's still empty and that is reserved for the calculator app. First off, I can use an app like Numi to calculate stuff. Second, I can use Spotlight or Alfred to calculate stuff. And then there's the calculator. The only thing this app is good for is for saving your result. Because if you calculate something within Alfred, you either have to copy this result by clicking enter or just remember it. With a calculator, you just have the result printed here. Also, you can't open multiple calculators at once with command N. So this app is pretty much useless. It's faster to just Google the calculator 
calculation. Voice memos. I'm recording this video inside of voice memos, so I have to put it in A tier. I could survive without it with something like Audacity, but it gets the job done. Better display. This app is an absolute S tier if you use an external monitor. So if you've ever tried using an external monitor with macOS, it's not the same with Windows. Everything basically looks garbage. So what this app does is it does some weird magic with the upscaling and then downscaling and lets you set your external monitor's resolution to high DPI, which makes everything look much better on macOS. On a default monitor, everything looks beautiful, but on an external one, Windows scaling works so much better, except for a few resolutions like 5K that are super rare and expensive. Definitely an S tier app. Better snap tool. This is basically rectangle, but a paid version. I'm putting rectangle in S tier. This app lets you snap windows to the edges of your screen with keyboard shortcuts or just by dragging them like this with your mouse. Better touch tool. I used to use it before, but I don't use it right now, but it's a pretty good app if you want to configure your trackpad or your other input devices. I don't really use it. What I do use is middle click. Definitely an S tier app. It allows me to do the same what the middle click does on your mouse, but with a three finger click on the trackpad. With the middle click, you can basically close tabs without clicking on the little X or open links in a new tab without right clicking and open in a new tab. Great feature. And this app lets me do that with the trackpad. Keyboard cleaner tool. It's for cleaning the keyboard. I can't really put it in A tier, so I'm putting it in B tier. I can either lock my Mac and then clean the keyboard, or I can use this app to temporarily disable it. The clock. This app is honestly A tier. Why would the clock be A tier? Because it allows for one of the best productivity techniques that I know or that work for me. If I sit down to do work and don't set a timer, I will spend 40% of that time working and 60% watching YouTube, checking my phone notifications and doing whatever else. If I set a timer and then stop it whenever I want to procrastinate or do something else other than work, it works so beautifully because there's one extra step I need to do before I start procrastinating and that's to stop the timer. It's one of the most effective productivity techniques that work for me. Disk Drill. This is also an A tier app. It lets you scan your file system and find large files and clean up those files if they're taking up too much space. Alt Tab. It's a really good app if you don't like the Alt Tab switcher on Mac, but I like the Alt Tab switcher on Mac, so I'm putting it in C tier. However, I used this app for a while and the best thing that it lets you do is see app previews inside of Alt Tab just like on Windows. It's a great app, I just don't use it. Parallels Desktop. This one lets you install Windows on Mac. Again, it's not for me because I already have a laptop with Windows. It's also a subscription, so it wouldn't make much sense for me to use it. However, if you only have a Mac and you want to run Windows, then this app may save your ass. Cooldown. This one lets you quickly toggle on low power mode. That's right. MacBooks also have a low power mode. It's just hidden away inside of system settings. So this app resurfaces it. But I don't use the low power mode that frequently because most of the time my MacBook is plugged in. So again, I'm putting it in C tier. Setup. You probably know what it is. It's a subscription that gives you access to a bunch of Mac apps for a monthly fee. I'm currently not a Setup subscriber because I already have most of the apps that I need that are inside that subscription. However, if you don't already own most of the apps, it could be nice. OBS. It's a free screen recorder that's also available on Windows and Linux. However, there are much better screen recorders when it comes to Mac. OBS is great for streaming, but I don't stream. And to make the screen recording look actually good on Mac, you need to really dig deep into OBS settings to make it not look like crap. And using something like QuickTime or CleanShot is so much easier and more effective. Image Optim. This one lets you optimize images to save space. I use it when I'm writing blog posts, so it's really good for saving space when you want to upload something to the web because web pages load a lot slower if there's a large image. They take up much more space than simple text. That's why you see a lot of crap resolution images on Google Images. Carabiner Elements. This one lets you remap your keyboard keys to whatever you want. I'm also putting it in A tier. I could live without it, but it's a really handy utility. For example, you can get rid of your caps lock key, which is pretty much useless if you don't type with two fingers. I've also remapped the F6 key, it's the little moon icon, and I'm not sure what it does, to become the Command H keyboard shortcut, which hides apps on macOS. Next is Keeping You Awake. This app is alternative to Chai or Amphetamine, and they all pretty much do the same thing and prevent your Mac from going asleep for a set amount of time. I'm also putting this one in A tier, because it's really useful to prevent my Mac from going to sleep when I'm exporting videos from Premiere Pro or doing something where I want to leave the laptop and let it run for a while. There's also a terminal command that can allow you to do this, but an app like this 
gives this command a user interface, Keka. If you know what WinRAR is on Windows, this is basically that. It's an archiving utility. It's quite useful because sometimes for Mac app videos, I download a zip file that the default macOS archive utility can't extract. So I just use Keka for that. Keycaster. This one lets you show keyboard shortcuts inside of screen recordings. I used to use it before, but now I don't use it. But it's a pretty solid utility. I'm putting it in B tier. Latest. This app lets you update all of your apps if they're not up to date. This is something that I already do when I open an app and then it prompts me to do it, so I don't use this utility. Linear mouse. This is an absolute S tier app. I like using an external mouse instead of the trackpad because it's just faster for me and it doesn't give me friction burns on my finger but in order for the mouse to work nice with mac os gestures i need an app to configure it because well, there's no other way. So with linear mouse, you can do things like reverse the scrolling direction, because by default, if you scroll with your scroll wheel on macOS, it will scroll in the opposite direction. You can configure all the settings, disable pointer acceleration, and also configure this per application. So I can have one scrolling speed inside of Google Chrome, and then another scrolling speed inside of Premiere Pro, for example. This is really nice. One of the best apps for Mac. Look away. This app looks really nice, and it reminds you to look away from your monitor to help save your eyes. I'm going to put it in B tier. Loop. It's another window manager. It works slightly differently from Rectangle, but I think Rectangle is still much better. So I'm putting it in C tier. Mission Control Plus. This app lets you close windows from within Mission Control. I would say on its own, it goes into B tier, but if you combine it with middle click, you can close app windows within Mission Control, not by clicking on this X, but by hovering over it and just clicking on your trackpad with three fingers or clicking on your middle mouse button. If you take advantage of this synergy, it will move to an A tier app, but on its own, it's B tier. Monitor control. This app lets you control external monitor's brightness with your keyboard. It's very useful if better display didn't exist. This functionality is already built into better display, so I'm going to have to put monitor control in C tier. If better display didn't exist, it would probably be an A tier app drinking beer on the job. Mousecape. I'm very biased towards this app, so I'm putting it in A tier. I love customizing my mouse cursor. You can see that I'm using a custom cursor right now. And on Apple devices, it's not super easy to do like on Windows. You have to use Mousecape. It's a third-party app, and it takes a lot more time to apply a cursor theme that you want. But if you love customizing your cursors, then this app is a must. Notion. I use Notion sometimes, but I use Apple Notes and Obsidian primarily for taking notes. So it's a B tier app for me. One switch. This one adds a bunch of toggles to your menu bar. However, I already know what I want to toggle on and off on my Mac, and I don't find that this app saves me that much time. So I'm putting it in C tier. Key clue. This app replaces an old app called Cheat Sheet. When you press and hold the command key, it'll show you all keyboard shortcuts available for that app. It's quite useful if you're trying to learn new software, like Premiere Pro, for example. <clears throat> if you want to learn Premiere Pro, you can check out the description. I have a course about it. You know, if you want to learn. But I don't really use this app because if I need to figure something out, I either use the help menu where I can type any command I want and macOS immediately shows me if there's a keyboard shortcut for it. And generally, I like to learn keyboard shortcuts from YouTube videos and not by doing trial and error with the software. Proton VPN. This goes into S tier. Why? Because it's the only VPN I was able to find that has a decent free version. It doesn't throttle your speed and you can connect to three locations, US, Netherlands, and Japan, so it's really good considering what you get for the free version. Reminders. I have to put reminders in A tier. I don't use a calendar app. Let me just quickly boink. But I like setting reminders, especially repeating reminders, for habits that I want to keep doing every day. I mostly use reminders on my iPhone because sometimes if my free iCloud storage runs out, they don't sync very nicely. So I use them primarily on my phone. However, it's a great app. Screen Studio. This one is amazing and bad at the same time. The reason it's amazing is that you can create beautiful screen recordings with it. It automatically has these smooth mouse animations that you can customize. It auto zooms in and zooms out. Out. However, if you make a lot of mistakes while you're recording and then try to edit this footage inside of Premiere Pro, for example, it's super laggy. I didn't put too much effort into figuring out why this is, but if you want to edit this footage later yourself, Premiere is going to lag. Also, since it's adding a bunch of effects and blur, it takes quite a while to export your footage, but the screen recordings turn out beautiful. So for now, I'm putting it in B tier. However, if you manage to do screen recordings without making a bunch of mistakes that you need to cut out later, you can easily 
easily promote this app to A or even S tier. Self Control. This is another S tier app. It lets you block websites for a set amount of time. It's great because I'm addicted to YouTube and this app just adds a brick wall so I can't get to it. There's also another one called the Cold Turkey Blocker that I started experimenting with not that long ago and it has a lot more features. But I haven't been using it for that long to put it in S tier. So I'm demoting it to A tier. PDF Expert. I'm putting this in C tier. It's a PDF editor. I don't really work that much with PDFs and if I do, the default preview app is pretty good. Where is it? Works wonderfully combined with Microsoft Edge. As I said, Microsoft Edge is probably the best PDF viewer. This app, I have no idea what it is. Let's quickly do a reverse image search. It's an app called Dato. Why is it on my list? I'm not sure if I've ever used this app, so I'm putting it in C tier. Day one, this is a journaling app. I use it pretty much every day in the evenings to journal, and it's a pretty good app for journaling. Lulu, this is a firewall for your Mac. So it lets you see when apps try to connect to the internet and then lets you block that connection if you want. It's useful if you want to prevent your calculator app to randomly needing to connect to the internet. I I started using it quite recently, so I'm putting it in B tier. MediaMate. This is purely an aesthetic app and it replaces volume and brightness controls to match your iPhones, as well as shows what track is now playing inside of your notch. I don't use it, but it's a pretty fun app. Sensible side buttons. This one would go into S tier or at least A tier if linear mouse didn't exist, but I don't use it because linear mouse exists. And it basically allows for the side buttons on your mouse to work, to go back and forward inside of your browser. Shotter. This is a free screenshot tool that lets you take screenshots and annotate them. I used Chatter for a very long time, but then I randomly switched to QuickTime once it started prompting me with messages to buy the pro version. So I can't really put it above B tier. SIP. This is a color picker. Now, macOS already has a color picker built in, but this one is just a lot nicer. I'm also putting it in B tier. Steam. If this was a Windows app tier list, I would put it in S tier. It's not Steam's fault that you can't play most games on Mac, but you can't play most games on Mac. It's the thing that keeps Windows alive. Swish. This is a pretty interesting utility and it lets you manage windows with trackpad gestures. As I've mentioned before, I don't really use the trackpad that much, but I can see how this app could be super useful for someone. For example, instead of clicking the minimize icon, you can swipe down with two fingers on the title bar of a window and it will minimize. Or you can swipe up to maximize it. It's a BTR app because I don't really use it. Tinker tool. This one lets you change a bunch of hidden settings, but I prefer to do that through the terminal, so I don't really use this app. Unsplash wallpapers. If I didn't have my own super beautiful five star wallpaper pack, I would put this app in B tier or even A tier. It basically pulls wallpapers from Unsplash, the free stock photo website, and applies them on your desktop. They can even change daily. So it's a pretty good app, but I only use it sometimes when I want to freshen up my desktop. So I'm putting it in C tier. Vanilla. This is a bartender replacement. I think bartender is still good, but it's a paid app. Vanilla is free and pretty much does the same thing. So I'm putting it right next to bartender. Visual Studio Code. This is a code editor. I'm putting it in A tier because recently I discovered this thing called Manim, which lets me create cool animations with Python that I can use to make my videos seem higher quality than they actually are. I even made a course about it for beginners. So I'm using VS Code more and more. Yoink. This is a another S tier app for me. It basically adds a little shelf where you can drag apps and then open another app and then drag apps from that shelf into that app. This little utility makes it so much easier to move files around your file system. I got used to it so much that now I pretty much use it every day. Grammarly. Well, it's kind of a browser extension and an app at the same time if you want to use it with Safari, but I'm putting it in A tier because it corrects grammar mistakes if you don't know grammar. The better you rank on spelling bee, the more this app goes down, so you can draw some conclusions about my spelling. Canva. If Photoshop didn't exist, I would put Canva somewhere in A tier or S tier, but I rarely use it. However, if you want to quickly design your course banner image or something like that, then Canva is really good. Deepol. Again, this is more of an app that I use on my phone, not on my Mac, but it's actually the best translator app that I've ever used. So if you go somewhere abroad and they speak Penguin, use this app. Cap. It's another screen recorder app, but I've only used it a couple of times 
times to try it out and then I defaulted back to QuickTime. So I'm putting it in C tier. Paletro. This app adds like a spotlight search to every single app, letting you search and run commands that are available. But just like with KeyClue, the one that shows keyboard shortcuts, I don't really use it. Keynote. This app is basically PowerPoint, but from Apple. The best part is that it's free if you buy a $2,000 Apple laptop, just like Google Slides. But I'm putting it in A tier. I liked creating two presentations with it. Numbers. This one I don't use, and this is basically Excel. Now I have to put Excel in A tier. It's a great app. I use Google Sheets more often because they sync with my Google account, but Excel is just an overpowered app. I have no idea how to do 98% of what's possible with it. As Panso, it's a text expander. I don't really need a text expander, so I'm putting it in C tier, and this one is quite hard to customize because it doesn't have a simple interface to do so, but if you learn how to customize it, then it could be useful if you want to create these text replacements. Pages. Just like Keynote is alternative to PowerPoint, Pages is alternative to Microsoft Word. However, I think that Microsoft Word is a lot more powerful and and I'm used to it a lot more compared to Pages. So I'm demoting Pages to B tier and leaving Microsoft Word on A tier. Amethyst. This app is a tiling window manager. It puts all of your windows in preset layouts and then you can switch between them with keyboard shortcuts. I tried getting used to it, but I think Rectangle just works much better for me. I can see how it could be super powerful for other people, but I just don't use it. Discord. I have to put it in B tier. I don't use Discord on Mac as often as on Windows, but it's an amazing Skype on steroids. Free File Sync. This app is definitely A tier. If you have a hard drive that you want to back up your Mac to, then you can use this app to do it automatically. Also, it can back up one hard drive to another hard drive. It's really useful for me because I have a bunch of large recordings that I often offload to hard drive. Moss. This one is another mouse utility. However, I use Linear Mouse, so I'm putting this one in C tier. Linear Mouse basically eliminates the need to use any other mouse utility. Onyx. This app lets you do a bunch of maintenance tasks on your Mac. It can verify, re-index stuff, and it also lets you change a bunch of lesser known settings. But as with many apps, I don't really use it that often, so I'm putting it in C tier. Screen Brush. This one lets you paint on your screen when you're doing presentations or screen recordings. At first, I thought I would use it a lot more than I actually do. So again, it goes into C tier. Grand Perspective. This one lets you visualize your file system. How much space are things taking up? I mostly use Disk Drill for all the file system cleanup stuff. So this one goes into C tier. Apple Music. I use Spotify. Shortcuts. I use this app primarily on my iPhone, so I'm putting it in B tier. And there's a pretty cool shortcut that you can set up to set your iPhone screen to go to black and white. When everything is in black and white, TikTok or Instagram or YouTube doesn't seem so appealing appealing anymore, which is really nice. Handbrake. This one can compress video files to make them take up less space. I've used it a couple of times to save space, but then decided to let my hard drives gobble up all the large video files. uTorrent. Torrent is the best file sharing system ever invented, and I use it. How many times? It goes into A tier. And that concludes the Mac app tier list. I'll probably put all of these apps in a list and link it in the description. Oh, and there's one more thing I forgot to say. Psych.